Shane Steichen with the media availability that just concluded a couple of minutes ago. What did we learn? I'll tell you what we learned, but I want to remind you, you've still got time because the Anthony Richardson jersey has not been delivered yet. The Indiana Knights jersey that I'm giving away. When it's delivered, we're going to pull a winner. All right? Hadn't been delivered yet, so you've still got time to enter. You do that by subscribing to this channel, subscribing to Two Big Brains, and DMing me. So I got a way to tell you that you've won and I can get your address. It's just that simple. Shane Steichen, talking about Danny Pinter, talking about EJ Speed, talking about Jonathan Taylor a little bit. And then I ask a question about lifestyle for coaches that I think is interesting. The other guys are like they're, they got to get quotes to fill stories. I just want to hear from the coach. I like asking questions through that lens instead of, hey, I got to get a quote about this. Let's hear from Shane Steichen. Um, I'll go ahead and start uh, just some injury updates. Uh, EJ. Uh, he had some symptoms following the game, so he's in the concussion protocol. And then just an update on Danny. Um, he'll be out for the year. Uh, he broke his ankle, which is very unfortunate. Um, so with that, I'll open up with questions. We'll go ahead and start with chat. Coach, uh, this, this is such a different role for you, for you. How is it different now on, on, you know, looking at the roster? It used to be like your position area. Yeah. Now it's more grand. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely different. Uh, there's a lot of tough decisions to be made here in the next couple of days. Uh, we're working through that uh, right now. Uh, tough decisions on both sides of the ball, special teams, all those different things. But um, the unfortunate part of this thing is we're probably going to have to let some really good players go. Um, and that's what's hard about this. But uh, we got to work through those things and uh, make the right decisions there. Raven? Coach, just kind of talk to me about what you saw from Daryl Baker and Dallas Flowers, not just from the Philadelphia game, but just throughout this preseason, getting those first team reps. Yeah, no, they've both of those guys have been really solid. Uh, they've been sticky in coverage. I know, obviously, the game yesterday, Dallas had some good pass breakups. Baker has been all over it. Uh, they've been good in man coverage. They've been good in zone coverage. Really like where they're at. You know, credit to them, credit to Coach Milo and Mike Mitchell uh, for getting them there. So really excited about both those guys. And just how would you describe kind of their progression from where you saw them in OTAs to where we are now? Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, you can see the jump just, you know, being in the system uh, that they're in and getting those reps over and over again, uh, being in the right spots uh, to make those plays. You know, I think when all the all 11 guys are communicating out there, especially on the back end uh, with different coverage techniques, um, I've seen the growth from them. The communication from them has been been awesome. James? Shane, how did you evaluate Drew Ogletree throughout the preseason and what went into the decision to start him in the preseason finale? Yeah, no, Drew's Drew's a really good route runner. He's physical. I know he's a little banged up, you know, here and there during training camp. Um, but, you know, he, he can run routes and he can make plays. And uh, he made some plays, you know, uh, last night, uh, which was really good to see on Thursday night. Um, but really like where he's at. Uh, the tight end group as a whole has been uh, really solid. Joel? Shane, with uh, with Danny going down, who who else kind of fits in the center spot there, and and how how much does that hurt you guys just in terms of figuring out the backup offensive line? Because it seemed like Danny was going to be one of those guys. Yeah, no, absolutely. Danny's a really good player for us. Uh, to lose a guy uh, like him um, is very unfortunate for us. Uh, I hope you know he has a speedy recovery. Uh, but just looking on the back end of those guys, uh, we're working through all that right now. You know, Wesley's took some uh, snaps there at center. Um, there's a couple other guys we're looking at uh, without naming a whole bunch of guys, but there's going to be some, you know, stiff competition there um, for those backup roles. Yeah. It's just so we're covered. Is JT still in on pup? Yep. Right now he is. Yep. Thank you. James. Um, Shane, when you look at the, the, the roster as a whole, I guess how much does, your position, not position, your responsibilities change as the head coach versus being a offensive coordinator. And is it meetings? Is it text message? Like, how, how does the process look when you're deciding how that roster goes? Yeah, I mean, obviously, a big part of that is, you know, dealing with, you know, talking with Chris, going through that thing. He's got experience. I'm very fortunate to have a guy in the GM role that's done it, um, that knows these players really well. Uh, so we'll have those conversations, you know, over the next couple of days uh, and really leaning on him uh, with those decisions, too. And one quick follow-up, is Shaq still in the protocol? Yes, he, he is. He's doing really good, though. Um, expect him back soon. 
And was, what was Julius Brent's out with? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, he had a hamstring. He got a hamstring in the joint practice uh, versus Philly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. Raven. And coach, last week you kind of mentioned how important this joint practice and an eventual game against the Eagles would really help you guys like see that competition for those roster bubble guys. So does that kind of translate to tomorrow's practice as well, especially with injuries like to Danny Pinter to kind of sort out those last few spots? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we'll have a good practice tomorrow, um, you know, before we, you know, make some decisions. Um, but it'll be good to get another day's work in. And the joint practices are always good uh, to get, you know, some other competition uh, with our guys. Uh, and, you know, hopefully we'll continue to do that uh, next next season for training camp. Kent. Yeah, Coach, uh, this is your first time down this road as a head coach. I wonder if there's a way that you're kind of monitoring your desire to grind 20 hours a day knowing it's a 17 week season and you got camp or are you making sure you have downtime? How do you do that? Yeah, no, uh, you know, you have a schedule, you lay out a schedule, you lay out your weekly schedule on how you want to get things done and make sure you're detailed with it. Uh, make sure you're on time with things. And, and obviously there's deadlines on certain things you need to get done throughout the week and make sure we're detailed on those um, throughout. I mean, that, that's the biggest thing is being detailed for these players, making sure as coaches we're prepared. So these players are prepared uh, to go out and, uh, play good football on Sundays. Um, and then downtime, we'll have some downtime here and next weekend we'll get a couple days, uh, players and coaches will get some time off uh, next weekend uh, to rest up for the season. Last one for George. Uh, Shane, what what's your message to the guys who might be in that 50 to 60 range on the roster right now uh, who are going to have to sweat out Tuesday, might also have to sweat out Wednesday? Uh, how What do you tell them as they prepare for this week? Well, I think the biggest thing I told those guys today in the team meeting, just, you know, if, appreciative of everyone that's been a part of this thing through training camp. You know, 90 guys, you got to cut it down. And it's part of the business. And uh, the guys that don't make it just appreciate, you know, everything they've done for us up to this point and any way that I can help them going forward. Uh, I'll do that. Sorry, last one for Kevin. Thanks, Ricky. Um, Shane, the tight end room obviously is pretty young. Mo's got some experience. What do you envision for Mo this season with such a young group? Yeah, no, he's a leader in there, obviously a veteran guy. And there's some good, you know, good nucleus talent around him, you know, just to be a leader. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. But the tight end group as a whole was really solid. I know we we're in and out, banged up injuries, but guys were stepping up during training camp. Um, and that, that, that position is going to be, you know, some tough decisions to be made there coming up in the next couple of days. That's Shane Steichen. I like him. He is no nonsense. None. Zero nonsense. Zero nonsense given. Zero nonsense taken. I like listening to him talk about coaching and his team. Going to be interesting to see who they keep and who they cut. I'm not going to go through that process of the 53-man roster thing. Everybody does it. People are always wrong, and it really doesn't matter in the end anyway because what you're talking about are maybe five spots at the tail end of the roster, and it's not going to make a damn bit of difference to anybody but those players, their families, their friends, and maybe you get a little bit of a, a bump in terms of special teams and depth you got to make the right choices in this thing tight end is going to be kind of interesting all that said so uh we'll see exactly what the colts do on sunday tomorrow kind of the last go round last practice for guys until cuts come on tuesday